Right-wing Republicans make the laughably absurd argument that we need to flood America with guns just in case the citizens need to rise up and overthrow the government. First, the government will always have more firepower. An AR-15 is effective at firing at unarmed civilians in a mall like we just saw in Dallas. But if our government was truly so evil that we had to fight it, they'd be taking on the rebels with tanks and fighter jets. Sorry to crush your hero fantasies, Rambo wannabes, but you would stand absolutely no chance whatsoever against a truly wicked government hellbent on taking over the country. Second, the only abusive United States government that attempted to overthrow America was the one led by Donald J. Trump, your hero. Trump proved that angry citizens and militias with deadly arsenals could be co-opted by the government. A charismatic cult leader could induce so-called patriots to lead a seditious coup. Far from protecting citizens from a despotic government, heavily armed goons aided and abetted the January 6th insurrection. So let's dispense with a crackpot idea that arming Americans to the teeth is a bulwark against tyranny. When the moment of truth came on January 6th, our so-called freedom fighters sided with the aspiring dictator to snuff out our democracy. Third, Republicans quash out almost any attempt at gun control. They say it's not the guns, it's our nation's mental health crisis. But if mental health is the issue, shouldn't we have a moratorium on guns until we make progress in addressing mental health? On one hand, Republicans are saying that we have too many crazies who need help. But on the other hand, they are tearing down barriers that would prevent these violent nuts from having access to guns. It's illogical. Conservatives won't admit the truth. America has a specifically right-wing extremist crisis that must be dealt with. A February report from the Anti-Defamation League found all the extremist-related murders in 2022 were committed by right-wing extremists of various kinds. The Anti-Defamation League counted 450 recorded killings by political extremists over the last decade. Right-wing ideologues are responsible for 75% of the deaths. Left-wing extremists were responsible for only about 4%. Nearly half of the murders were specifically tied to white supremacists. Sorry, right-wingers, you're the problem, not Antifa. That's in your imagination, not reality. You know what's not hypothetical? The tyranny of not being able to send your child to school in the morning without worrying about a mass shooting. The tyranny of not being able to shop in a mall without the possibility of a deranged shooter ending your family's lives. The tyranny of not being able to worship peacefully in a synagogue, church, or mosque for fear of a deranged lunatic bursting in with an AR-15. The tyranny of not being able to tell your crazy neighbor to stop shooting his damn gun because he's waking up your baby. The tyranny of not being able to go to a movie theater because your life might end like it's part of the horror flick you're watching on the big screen. This year, we have seen an average about one mass killing per week. Any one of us could be next. So I'm not worried about being armed to fight a rogue U.S. government. What threatens our lives today are Second Amendment extremists who have insanely allowed virtually anyone to buy an arsenal of war weapons and have them at their disposal to carry out their insane fantasies. This is the real tyranny. It's terrorizing Americans, and this nightmare must come to an end.